Hey guys and welcome and welcome back to my channel. So I am finally, finally, finally doing my review of the Fenty Beauty line. You know, I figured what better way to bring in this new launch by Rihanna than to recreate a look by Rihanna. So I went ahead and chose this look out of the many beautiful ones that she has. So I'm just going to jump into the face so I can try on the products because I also want to do a, you know, check way throughout the day and a wear test and then come back and give my final thoughts at the end of this video. So before I just rant on any longer, let's get into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is use the Pro Filter Instant Retouch Primer on my face. Now as for foundation, I have three in front of me. One is for my friend, but I might just, you know, crack into that one just so I can show you guys swatches of those three later on. But 450 is actually the shade of the Pro Filter Soft Matte Long Wear Foundation that I thought was for my skin tone. Um, so I'm gonna use that one right now for this makeup look, but I did pick up 460 as well. And to blend that out, I'm going to be using the Makeup Sponge by Fenty. It has that little, you know, uh, slanted straight side on that part. They do say to use it dry if you want full coverage, so that's what I'm going to do during this look. I don't know how to feel about the shade that I picked yet. I feel it's not even the shade, it might just be the undertone that might be a little too red for me. But you know what, we're gonna see how this entire look looks by the end. So the next two things that I did pick up are the match sticks. I picked it up in the shade Coco to conceal underneath my eyes. And then I picked it up in the darkest shade, which is Espresso to contour. Even though you guys know that, I don't really use products like this to contour but I wanted to show it just in case you are someone who uses products like these to contour and to see if this is a shade that will show up dark enough that's for someone who's my skin tone. feels weird using a dry sponge to blend all of that in, but everything is still blending in pretty easily. So um, Fenty did not come out with any setting powders. They did come out with the Invisimat blotting powder, which I am going to use later on in the video, but because they don't have any actual like baking or setting powders, I'm going to use the powders that I usually use, you know, RCMA, all that good stuff, and then I'll be back. Okay, so we're going to contour using that shade that I said espresso, and then we're going to get into the scariest part, at least for me, which is highlighter. I'm not even going to lie. Uh, trophy wife low-key intimidates me, so it's just not right. When you're not used to the contour actually showing up on your face, now you're just like, oh, damn. Yeah, uh, all right. So for highlighter, I actually picked up two. I picked up one of the single pans and then one of the duos. The sing nope, no, this is the duo. This is the single. The duo that I picked up is Ginger Binge and Moscow Mule. And then the single is Trophy Wife, the one everyone has been talking about. Oh, that's just that. Um, this is what Trophy Wife looks like on the inside. Very 
beautiful color but a tad bit intimidating and then this is moscow mule and ginger binge i want to use this one just because like i really like the colors of this however i feel trophy wife kind of goes more with the look that i'm trying to recreate here you know it's rihanna inspired but i will swatch these later on when i'm going through you know my thoughts on these products um need a brush here too. oh god all right two but that was we're gonna start off small here and work our way up. Let's just see how that. All right. One, two. Oh, dust that. I feel like it definitely came out uh, a little more subtle on this side compared to this side. Maybe my hand got a little stronger on that one, um, but still not that bad on this side. Can I take a little bit of Trophy Wife for my nose? Jesus. I don't think I've ever seen such a pigmented highlighter in my life. I literally went in like everywhere you possibly can with Trophy Wife after everything that I just said. So the only thing left are the lips. All the products that I used on my face will be linked in the description box down below, including the ones that are not from Fenty Beauty, which is why I just kind of skipped over those. So to top my lips, I'm going to be using the Gloss Bomb, which is a universal shade. Okay, so this is the look to my face as always i'm going to keep my thoughts until the end of the video something a little different that i'll be doing is checking in in a couple of hours i don't know maybe around 3 p.m just so i can use the invisimat and you know see if my face does need to be blotted um and then i'm gonna really come back at the end around like 7 p.m to see what somewhere around seven hours of where this makeup looks like so right now it is it is 11.09, so I'm gonna go and I will see you guys later. Okay, so I am back and it is now 4.09. I normally don't do this, but again, I just wanna check in so I can try the blotting powder. I really like how this is packaged. So we're just going to tap, 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 and apply this to my T-zone, which is usually where I get the oiliest. First, and I guess a little bit of nose there. And okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and insert a little flash test right here, and then I'll be back in a couple of hours to just wrap up this entire video. Alright, so it is 6.32. I know I said 7, but it's getting hot in this sweater. And my mind's pretty made up on these products, so you know, I didn't think like 30 minutes would kill me. So it's it's been a while. I'm pretty sure it's been over 7 hours anyway by now. Um, but this is what my face looks like. So let's just jump right into this. If you see me looking down, I'm looking at my Sephora order because there were a lot of products that I tried out and I feel like if I'm not looking through it while I'm going through my thoughts, I'm gonna forget to talk about a product. But starting out with prime, actually, I'm gonna do foundation first. Starting out with foundation, I used the shade 450 to do my makeup today, but like I said, I have 430, 450, and 460 in my possession right now, and this is the three of them on the back of my hand. This is 430, this is 450, and then this is 460. Um, these do dry down a tad bit darker, They, in, but that they instantly dry down a little bit darker. It's not exactly the same thing with oxidizing. I don't feel like this foundation really oxidizes. Um, I feel like when you pump it out the first time, 
after by the time you apply it onto your face it has dried down to a tad bit darker of a shade but throughout the day it doesn't you know progress by getting darker that way I hope that makes sense um so I did feel at first if you could notice my expression while I was um applying the foundation onto my face I was kind of feeling like my face looked darker than the rest of my body but then I also felt like my face looked darker than the rest of my body before I even put foundation on and I feel like that was just um, something I have to blame on my viewfinder, which is what I was looking at while I was doing that because while I was editing this I feel like 450 really was um, a good match for my entire body Like I feel like the whole thing looked a little even it might be the slightly red Warm undertone of this foundation that made it look you know a tad bit off if it did look off um, But I feel like that's probably the best shade that I could pick if anything I might I might Go into Sephora just to see 440 if that might be a little bit better of a shade for the winter but I do feel like 450 was a good shade for me um, again that's 430 460 is a tad bit more cool so um, if you feel like 450 might be a good shade for you but the warmness is throwing you off this is a little bit more cool so that might help in a way um, but as for the actual foundation it claims a couple of things you guys know I like to point that out when reviewing a foundation so it says that this is a soft matte long wearing foundation with buildable buildable medium to full coverage in a breaking shade range um, I feel like all of that is true like everything that it just said is true about this foundation it is a soft matte like it instantly dries matte on your face you don't have to question whether or not this is a matte foundation it is long wearing it has not moved on my face it's not breaking up usually when I do get um, foundations that spread and break out is somewhere in this area and I haven't had that happen it is a medium coverage foundation is not full coverage whatsoever um, I have some acne scars here on my cheek area which you can kind of still see just a little bit this was really only like one and a half pumps that I put on my face and I do have some you know like actual beauty marks that you can kind of see through the foundation so it is a medium coverage foundation however this is definitely buildable to a full coverage foundation and if you're someone who likes even less foundation you can build it down that way too so that it's not even a medium coverage foundation for you and what else did it say oh the uh, breaking shade range um this comes in 40 shades if you didn't know that now you know i don't know how you wouldn't but now you know this comes in 40 shades um i think that's just amazing especially since it's a new brand and this was her first go i even i've even heard rumors and the launch just happened what three days ago or something like that that um, she's gonna come out with another 40 shades so um, gotta give props where props are due but going back to the primer um, I like the primer and the foundation together but I'm just kind of curious on how the found uh, the primer would go on its own just because the primer claims that it will help with diffusing pores smooth your skin and shine stopping I definitely feel like it'll help with your pores I definitely feel like it helps with smoothing your face and kind of giving giving you that smooth filter without using the actual filter on your face however I'm not so sure about the whole shine stopping because after I applied it I felt like I was still I had some areas that were still a little shiny on my face with just the primer so I'm kind of curious as to how much of my face still being matte after seven hours of wear is due to the primer and how much of that is due to just how matte the foundation itself is um, I'm gonna have to give the primer another go around with a, another foundation the Becca ultimate coverage is the one I've been using lately um, so I'm gonna use it under that one just to see like you know if it really is a shine stopping type of primer or if it was the foundation that I have on right now that is doing all of the shine stopping. But I will say this is a hydrating primer. I don't believe it claims to be one of those, but you can feel it when you put it on your face. This is a very hydrating 
primer. Okay, so on to the matchsticks. Um, I like both of the... Sh oh, I forgot to <laughs> mention that before. They kind of uh, magnetize to each other, which I'm sure you guys have watched like a million <laughs> reviews by now and you know that. Um, but I like both of the shades that I picked. I picked Coco to use as a conceal shade and I used Espresso as a contour shade. I liked how both of the shades looked on my skin. Espresso actually showed up on my skin, which, which isn't something that happens that often for me. Um, and Coco would probably be a better just conceal shade than a highlight conceal shade. I believe they said Suede is the shade that my skin tone should have used if I really wanted that, you know, emphasized highlighted look underneath my eye. But I'm okay with this one. I feel like it still kind of did that. It just didn't go overboard by doing that. Um, however, with that being said, I didn't like the initial contact that these had with my skin. And I, I say that very specifically because I mean it in a very specific way. I'm not saying I don't like how these apply to your skin, I just don't like how they apply to your skin. I realized it when I first put Coco on to try to put the concealer on, that it feels like it's going to be something that's drying and something that's very hard to blend out, but that's not how it is at all. So that's what I mean when I say I don't like the initial contact that it has with your skin because it kind of feels like you're tugging on your skin to put this on. But once you get to blending, that doesn't happen at all. And it's probably because I expected this to be more of a creamy um, consistency, which it is, but it isn't. It's just weird with these two. I don't know what it is, but I feel like they're not like dry to powder type of things, but they're not creamy either. They're just somewhere in the middle, which makes it feel weird once you're putting it on. But once you put it on, they're going to blend out on your face. The sponge that I use, I didn't even use wet, which I feel like most people are just like, what? Like, you don't wet it? It felt very weird not wetting this to use on my face, but a dry sponge, everything just blended out great. The foundation blended out, the concealer blended out. Um, I did use the sponge and a brush to blend out the contour, but still, for things that I didn't expect to blend out just because of how it felt putting it on my skin, um, I was surprised when they did blend out so easily. As far as Coco as a concealer shade, um, I like it. It hasn't really creased, other than the place that I just always crease. If you've ever watched any review I've done on a concealer, you know that I always crease like right here, but I haven't had any creasing anywhere else. So I did like it as a concealer. Now as for espresso, um, unless this is the first video of mine that you're watching, then you know that I don't like anything other than a powder to contour my face. Um, espresso is a color that showed up on my face. It was pretty easy to blend out on my face and for this type of product and for a color that actually shows up on my skin it didn't give me a harsh well that was just like my like on <laughs> i feel on one side of my face it's a little less harsh than the other one but the other one isn't really that harsh either um it didn't give me like that you know like type of contour on my face which I don't really care for. I like a more subtle contour let's just put it that way um, and I feel like for the type of product that it is and for how dark of a shade that it is I like that it did give me more of a subtle natural contour. Now as for the sponge they got very close to making it pretty similar to the Beauty Blender. Um, I can't speak on this wet though because I didn't use it wet but I know the Beauty Blender doesn't really do much if you don't use it wet. They're pretty similar but if you've watched any of my videos lately then you know I haven't really been feeling the Beauty Blender. I've been using a sponge by Tarte. So right now this is on the same level to me as the Beauty Blender. They're both nice sponges to have and if you got it like that where you want or you need, you know, you're a makeup artist, you need multiple sponges for one go, then um, I would definitely just have this to have around, but it's not going to be my new, you know, go-to sponge doing my face. Moving on to the highlighters, this one is the Duo, the one that I did not use on my face today, so I put it on the back of my hand. This one is Ginger Binge, and this is Moscow Mule. Um, gin, is it Ginger Binge? Hold on one sec. <laughs> Keep getting confused with the two colors. Open. One second. So this is Ginger Binge and this is Moscow Mule. 
Ginger Binge is definitely more sheer than Moscow. This one is sheer too, but this one is going to be easier to build on your face. This is pretty sheer and I feel like it's just going to take a lot of a lot of this to um, build this up to uh, um, unless you don't like a strong you know highlight which not everybody does but if you do then this one's going to take a lot more work than this one to build up however they're both sheer they're both buildable and they're both very pretty colors and moving on to probably the second most talked about product that Fenty released it is a trophy wife here it is on the back of my hand and it's also the highlight that I used on my face today. Now Trophy Wife is a gold highlight, however it can quickly run yellow on your face. I feel like depending on how you use it, I just feel like this is not a highlight that you can just pile onto your face for several reasons, not just because you know it might start to look yellow on you. Um, I feel like it's similar to the Anastasia Dip Brow in that the Dip Brow is so pigmented and just so that depending on how you use it, it can go from having just bold eyebrows to, you know, like carved out block eyebrows. And there's nothing wrong with either one of those. Just like this, you know, like if you want to pile your highlight on, you can. It's just if you're worried about that happening, there are certain ways you can apply this onto your face so that doesn't really happen. Um, starting out lightly is one of those ways but this highlight is also glittery so I feel like piling it on like just starting out piling it on is going to emphasize the glitter on your face because I feel like the glitter on my face is more noticeable on this side where my hand got a little more crazy than it is on this side I feel like this side is just like a natural glow to my face and you can't really even tell that I put highlight there um, as opposed to this side um, it's a very nice highlight, but this is not my everyday highlight. If anything, Moscow or Ginger would probably be more of my everyday highlights, even though these two are kind of glittery as well. I feel like Trophy Wife is one of those, you know, like you're going to collect your last things at his house and you're just going to take a couple minutes, if you know what I mean. Now, also something you would know if this is not the first video of mine that you are watching, I don't really like blotting my makeup in general, but especially during any type of wear test video that I do, I just feel like, look, I'm gonna put this makeup on my face in the morning and if it doesn't make it until night, it just doesn't make it until night. I don't like taking a whole bunch of makeup with me to go, you know, check in and do this in the bathroom about the day. I just really don't like doing that. But I did buy the Invisimat blotting powder for me to test out during this video and this might have changed how I feel about the idea of blotting because it just makes your face extremely matte like even more matte for this matte of a foundation um and it has no flashback which is even better like it's this color of a powder that you're putting onto your face and it's got no flashback and it just keeps your face matte I mean I, I don't foresee that I'm gonna start blotting even more now but this is definitely something that's gonna go straight into my purse so that if there is, is ever that occasion where I'm like oh I really wish I had brought something for me to blot now I'm gonna have it so I'm gonna use this to blot my face and I feel like the only thing that I have left to talk about is the gloss here it is on the back of my hand the foundations are pretty dry by now um, and again they only dry like a little bit darker but back to the gloss there it is it is a universal shade and I do feel like this is a shade that will just look great on everybody it's, it's it's a gloss like I feel like that's really all that you can say it's not sticky um, it is gonna transfer that's, that's pretty much like all there is to say about this gloss I feel like it's the perfect gloss to go on any type of lip combo that you have on um, I, I really do like this gloss and I feel like there's not much to say about it. all the products I got through them okay I got I guess I got through them very quickly um I did not pick up any of the brushes nor did I pick up the illuminating sticks however for what I see in front of me and what I've tested out I feel like Fenty Beauty is exactly what I expected Fenty Beauty to be now I've seen some comments going around something you know like oh the packaging seems really girly and I don't expect that for Rihanna and I was just like really why I mean Rihanna has a badass personality to her just aura you know just all around her however when you look at it and especially at me after looking for a look of hers to recreate her makeup is usually a natural type of glam all the time especially her base products which is mostly what she came out with she gave you like a full face for your base makeup it's usually very natural 
um and me being someone who that, that doesn't make sense so i was gonna say me being someone who likes middle me being someone who's in the middle you know I, i'm not a go-to full coverage person i'm not a go-to sheer coverage type of person being in the middle i like when products are in the middle so i like that these products are in the middle and i can make that decision just depending on that day if i do want a full face or if i want a sheer face you know i like that i can build the foundation either way you can do that with the concealer you can do that with the uh, contour sticks um you can do that with the highlighters kind of you can do that with trophy wipe and i feel like with the duo you can do that with moscow but you i feel like it's going to take a lot to build ginger into a, a bold highlight if that is something that you like so i'm not i'm not really feeling it as far as building the highlighters um, just because I feel like you have to build them very specifically, but everything else it is very easy to blend either way that you want to. So um, the standout products for me are the foundation, the concealer, the gloss, and the blotting powder. And the blotting powder is probably the most shocking for me just because I don't like blotting whatsoever. Um, the primer, I'm probably going to have to give that another go around just to make sure, you know, it does what it says it does. Um, not really feeling the contour stick but again i'm someone who prefers a powder contour um and what else and the highlighters i do like the highlighters um if i use the highlighters we're going to be honest I, they're going to be very minimal of me wearing them like i don't mean like just the amount of times i wear them is going to be minimal i mean like when i'm putting them on it's going to be just a tiny bit because i don't really care for the glitter that is in here but um yeah, I feel like that is pretty much it for this video. So that is it for this video. I hope seeing all of this on my face and hearing some of my thoughts has helped in a decision of whether or not you're gonna try this out for yourself. Make sure to thumbs up, comment, and subscribe down below. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.